¡Hasta luego! Bueno, hoy había clase, pero nos vamos a escapar de clase. Para aprender más. Es un eh. sitio muy guapo para, para aprender, aprender más. Exactamente, lo que ha dicho Dani. Este bicho seguramente no lo volvamos a ver en nuestra vida, así que... Ojalá trabajemos algún día en él. No, pero ahora cuando lleguemos os enseño a dónde vamos. Bueno, pues estamos en el puerto de Rada Azul. Hemos venido aquí porque hace unos dos meses eh, fuimos a ver un submarino, que solo existen seis submarinos en el mundo que bajen más de 2.000 metros, que sean privados. Y el dueño del submarino, Scott Waters, pues nos invitó aquí al puerto de Rada Azul y tenemos la oportunidad de ver el submarino. O sea que vamos a ver qué, qué nos enseña y estamos muy motivados, con ganas de verlo. Pues a ver qué tal está el submarino. Ya tenemos visual. Ahí está el submarino. Fua. Qué guapo. So, um, as far as the Pisces, she was originally built in 1976, and this is what she looked like originally. Uh, she was built for oil exploration, and um, later in her life started doing scientific research. The submarine originally was meant for two people, and if you really squeeze, could put in three people. Nowadays, three people is normal for us, and we can actually take four if we need to. So, typically, we don't when we're doing science missions, just because of a payload, and we want to put instruments on the the submarine. Our, but we're in National Geographic. Um, this is our science mission that we did. So, a lot of the work that was done on six gill sharks early on was done with the submarine. And um, this was by Dr. Eugenie Clark. Uh, she's known kind of as the shark lady, and a lot of what we know about deep sharks is research that she did. Um, and she did a lot of her research with our submarine and got, uh, originally the six-gilled sharks were thought to be very, very rare. But now we know they're one of the most abundant sharks in the deep ocean. And uh, they're also a prehistoric shark, too. Uh, they've literally been unchanged for millions of years. We replaced the flotation sphere with syntactic foam. So uh, we show this to a lot of people so they can understand why we need to use it. Because here is a normal styrofoam cup. You've probably seen this before. And that's the styrofoam cup after it's been to our pressure. <laughs> so we need a special type of foam that allows us to, uh, allows the flotation to remain constant throughout the dive. And uh, basically what this is, is glass microspheres, little tiny uh, glass pieces that are encased in epoxy. And so this is made very specially for our submarine and the whole aft section is now made with this instead of that flotation sphere. So we don't have that possibility anymore. And then um, this is one of the original viewports. It's an old one that's expired. They only last for 10 years and then we have to recertify them. Um, they're very, very expensive, but this one, since it's expired, we let people look at it, hold it, and um, It's a, uh, the, the, the interesting thing is when you look at it from the outside in, it looks like a very small viewport, but when you look on the inside out, and you can turn it side to side, you actually have a very wide range of view. Yeah. And then um, here is actually our home now. So we were um, originally an American company, but we transferred to a Spanish company now. And um, there's no better place in the world for us to be where we're not on a mission because here we can dive anytime, um, the great water, we can do lots of research um, in between missions. So it's a perfect place for us. And whenever you study the hydrothermal vents, um, is there a problem about temperature? I mean, how, yeah. how close can you approach? That's a really good question. So the, uh, the interesting thing about water is when there's volcanic activity, uh, water's a giant um, heat sink. So um, you can actually get incredibly close, and in a matter of a half a meter, you would have a temperature difference from one and a half degrees Celsius to a hundred degrees Celsius, just in you know, that short of distance. So the metal on the submarine really is fine. There's really no danger to it. However, the, the windows are plastic and they will melt. So we have a special sensor on the, the front of the vehicle 
that goes into a thing called the central enunciator panel. And if the water temperature starts to spike, an alarm goes off inside letting the pilot know to back up. However, um, a lot of times scientists want to get that measurement of what is the temperature of the water coming out there. So the manipulator has a special temperature probe called a RTD and sticks it right into the um, hydrothermal vent so we can take those temperature measurements. But the submarine, um, that's actually what our sister submarines, Pisces 4 and 5, that was like their main thing they did. So for example, the most important thing is we need to get up. And <laughs> so there's seven ways to the surface. If one breaks, then we go the next one. If that breaks, we go the next one <laughs> seven times. So it's very redundant and um, and very much designed for uh, for things to break and still function perfectly okay. So that's an important thing with submarines when you're two, two <laughs> kilometers <laughs> underwater. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so when when will you expect to go down with the PCCs here in Tarif? Um, yeah, so we'll be putting it in the water here in just a few weeks. Uh, we're pretty close to our, our next test. There is a series of tests that are re required to happen still. We're, I think we're down to four more left. And then um, we get our certification, so, but. And Scott, in case that, um, imagine that you have in a scientific uh, research program and you have to go to PC6, you have to follow like, a, do some drills or some like exams or protocols or something before going inside the PC6. Um, for uh, for the scientists, like yes, yep. if I've never been there, yep. like I have to do some. Yep, that's right. So um, there's a mission specialist training that we do for everyone that goes on a dive. Um, it's not a very difficult training, but what it's intended to do is add another level of safety in the very unlikely event that the pilot just passed out, and then you're in there and like, okay, what do I do? <laughs> So we, we teach everyone how to use the radio. We teach everyone how to go up in an emergency. Um, very basic things like that. Um, and then we also have special things in the submarine in case there's smoke in there. Um, we teach you how to put that on just like an airplane. Um, and we do that training in here typically. We go through it. And then once you've had the training, you get a little card and um, you don't have to go through that training again. Um, but for a lot of people, uh, Tourist-wise, they may only go one time, so they do the training once. But for scientists, a lot of times they'll want to use it, and then next year they want to use it again. So um, we do that training with everyone, so they're familiar with it. Okay, do you guys want to go see the, the yeah, sunlight? Sure. Yes. Sure. Yeah. They're very sensitive, so for sunlight and everything, we keep them blocked. And then we have this special guard over here because the first thing people like to do is go touch it and look at it. If we scratch that viewport. Um, it doesn't take much of a big scratch before we have to throw the viewport away. So um, these little protective covers are on there. And we actually dive with those, water goes behind it. But in case we hit something and it scratches it, we just throw the cover away and put on a new one. This is the, uh, a lot of times we call it the science basket. And this is what we bolt all the um, experiments, all the instruments, anything to. And it has this grade on it. So same thing with electronics too. Um, this is, we call it the science junction box. And so any type of instrument, as long as it has any of these type of subcon underwater connectors, you just plug right into it. You don't have to rewire anything on the submarine. And uh, it goes inside. Uh, so we can either put it to a laptop or we can put it into the science computer. Scott, isn't it uh, this adventure to have this outside the submarine? Uh -huh. Like in case of that kind of either thermal bends or big fish or something like hits that kind like the box like yeah I mean so this has actually happened before um, when uh, our, our sister submarine Pisces I think it's five um, they had a swordfish one time come in and actually hit right up in the front of Whoa. the submarine Whoa. and um, cut one of the hydraulic lines <laughs> it can happen so if it wow. happens <laughs> That's that, bad luck. It's yeah, yeah it's not like they've done what, yeah. like 5,000 dives yeah, between the two submarines? I mean, and it's happened yeah. one other time that I know of too on Alvin, way back when they were beginning, they had another a swordfish attack. And, uh, huh, that's interesting. <laughs> so is anything in the outside that is vital to work for the submarine? Um, I mean, if we lost any system here, uh, there is almost none of these systems that would require an abort. Um, this is our one of two, um, transducers is how we communicate this thing here and um, we have another one that's also on the top too so that's the only one that if we lost it like 
okay, that, that causes a problem if we didn't have the other so one. That's the way you communicate with surface, right? Yeah. Okay. This is the mend light? Um, so this one here is actually just a small work light. We have big ones that go up here. They're taken off right now. But this one is just kind of for the local working area. How many lumens does it have? Like uh, this one's only like 2,800. The big ones here go up to 85,000. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we also have like these here are auxiliary drop weights. Uh, just in case we mm -hmm. need to one of our seven ways to go up goes up faster or something yeah um, normally those never come off they just stay there but um, that's what those are for because they're the quietest thrusters in existence um, they have no central shaft and so the thing that causes cavitation is the high pressure coming to the low pressure of the propeller blade right well if there's no blade for it to go around it can't do that so they don't cavitate um, so that's really advantageous because if you're looking at marine uh, wildlife, there's not all this thruster noise and tons of submarine noise. It's just actually very quiet. And um, so those were specially built for us in Denmark and um, very interesting and cool technology. <laughs> so currently right now we have the main battery, which is this giant big thing. Um, it, let's see here, I think it weighs Holy shit. About 1,700 kilos. So it's, it's a pretty La battery. Uh, no, it's actually lead acid. This tank here, and there's another one that looks exactly like it on the front. And that is, they're trim tanks. And what those are for is if we're going up the underwater mountain or down a mountain, the last thing you want to do is look at it like this the whole time instead of try, like trying to look up. So we actually tilt the submarine up so you can just go along the boat pile. Or same thing going down. If you're going down, the back of the submarine will keep hitting so we can angle down like this. And so we just move water from one tank to another uh, to adjust the trim. Any direction, either forward or, but you can tilt forward or back like this. And then the submarine can crab side to side, go straight up or down or uh, forward or backward. And of course it can spin around in a circle. So you can do a lot of really good movements uh, to allow a, a good agility. So if you, if you want to go like down steeply and faster, mm -hmm. you will go like this with more friction or you will go like this, like tilt? Um, when we're going uh, like straight up or down, we just keep the submarine in trim. Um, it takes a long time. Even though we're falling about 30 meters a minute, it can take up to an hour to get where we're going. So um, it's a nice calm time. It's actually my favorite time because you turn off all the lights on the submarine. Wow and you look out and see all the bioluminescence. Wow. <laughs> it's so bad. It, wow, Adi. Uh, it's as soon as we hit the bottom, I'm like, wow. oh no, it's gonna end soon. <laughs> yeah, we did this dive. Um, Where do we go now? Yeah, <laughs> I, I did a dive on Alvin um, off the coast of New York, and we were diving down, they shut off all the lights, and there, there's a little bit of light inside the submarine, and I took a blanket and put it behind my head, and I was just staring out of all the little flickering and you start to forget that you're in the submarine and you honestly just feel like you're you're inside of what you're doing and it's it's really amazing um, and it's a feeling like no other it, it really it's like it's hard to explain how it feels but the definite thing I think every single person that goes in a submarine will tell you is their vision of how the world is completely changes it when you can physically see it and feel it um, it's pretty amazing so uh, that's like what really drives me and I, I love that and pretty much all of us it's it's a, a really really it definitely cool feeling. changes what being a human is yeah. <laughs> it's like being to space yeah if you guys would like I can take you in the sub probably two at a time and uh, show you all the instruments in there and how things work yes, sir. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Aquí es donde están los ingenieros y está todo los cables y todo el, las piezas y tienen luces hasta de una luz de 85.000 lúmenes para el submarino, o sea que es brutal. Eh, en pocas palabras, ¿cómo es por de? Yo no tengo palabras, tío, lo, lo más que guay que he hecho en mi puta vida. Uah, ¡Quiero subir ya! No sé lo que hay que hacer para acabar ahí, pero... <risa> pero quiero. Me toca, me toca. Y el candle aquí lo puedo grabar. Y 
Okay. Ready. Uh, should I take my boots out? Yep. It never gets old. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, wobbly. Here, come down. The first person go off to the right. Second person go off to the left, and I'll be in the middle. Okay. Okay. Come here. Come here. <laughs> uh, should I put my feet there? Yep. Okay. Um, can I grab? Oh, okay. There you go. And then, uh, yep, yeah, perfect. <laughs> then you just have a seat here on the right. Wow, Dios! <laughs> this is so cool. <laughs> oh my God! Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'll kind of give you a tour of everything. Um, this is the pilot seat here in the middle and then passenger on either side. When we're going down in the water, um, a lot of times it, you can move around a lot of different ways and, and get comfortable, but the whole back area, I guess not for you, but the whole back area, you could put your feet way back there. Um, everybody ends up with one of these blankets here, so you it's can really kind of cool. move it around for comfort. Okay. Um, but normally, these windows are all open. We have them closed right now just for the, the sunlight. Uh -huh. So, I'll run you through all the, the controls. Um, this right here is the main power that comes in and how we distribute that main power. This is our low power, and this is all of the individual instruments. And then... This right here is all of our exterior lights. And this is our depth gauge. And the depth gauge is kind of cool. Um, it goes it has to go around twice in order to show the accuracy that we need. So, actually a little adjustment, there we go. And um, so it goes around the first time to 1,200 meters and then on the inside, and then we go, uh, and this actually shows us here how, uh, how which turn you're on. Mm -hmm. So, um, kind of like a, an airplane. So this is our main ballast system here. When we get up to the surface, we add a whole bunch of air to our tanks, which allows the submarine to float very stable on the surface. And that's how we control that. And they're redundant systems. This one can break and we have another fully redundant system. This is our fuel gauges here. This tells us how much power we have. This is our high power and our low power. And then we have this little red button here, just in case the pilot uh, smelled smoke or needed to shut off everything very quickly, they can hit that button and then there's a startup procedure to get everything turned back on in case something broke um, and wasn't automatically shut off. This right here is the central enunciator panel and it uh, shows what's happening on the submarine at any mm -hmm. given time. It has sensors all through the sub. Um, if something breaks, it tells you what's broken and how bad it is and what, what you need to do. So it's kind of like the brain of a submarine. Um, this is our uh, the joystick, how we actually fly the submarine. So forward, backward, we can crab left, crab right, and turn left, turn right, up or down. And so that's how this works right there. All the thrusters are, are controlled by that. And this central screen here is the navigation screen. It shows um, the sonar. Uh, so we can actually see way further than the human eyes can see. And then it also shows our altitude, our distance above the ocean floor. And then also shows the compass. And then we have our primary compass here too. Um, so very commonly um, on a mission, you might, we'll have a map and we'll say, okay, the scientists want to go here and then they want to go 120 degrees okay. here. And then they want to go 60 degrees over here. So. We'll just run a track and then the, the surface is watching us to um, make sure that you know, we're going the right places that we need to. Can you make like waypoints too? Yep, exactly. Yeah, and that's actually exactly what we okay. do is we make waypoints <laughs> and we say, okay, waypoint one, waypoint two, yep. And that's exactly how we do it. Um, 
Then uh, this right here is our variable ballast control. And um, if you remember that tank in the front and tank mm -hmm. in the back, this is how full those tanks are. And then um, this is to turn on the pump. Oops, sorry. No, sorry. Um, we normally route what's happening. So if we want to go up, we'll route both pumps going, pumping out. Or if we want to, you know, make one lighter, one heavier, we can transfer this way. So, um, then uh, these sensors have two of them, and they are our um, uh, oxygen and CO2 uh, meters. We have two of them, so we always know they agree with each other. And um, it'll let us know what our oxygen level in the submarine is and what our mm -hmm. CO2 level is. How do you extract the CO2? Good question. That's yeah. what this is right here. We have two of them. They're called a CO2 scrubber. And there's a special chemical in there that takes out the CO2 transfers it from carbon dioxide to calcium carbonate, and then lowers the atmospheric pressure. When that happens, then we add more oxygen right back in to make the environment exactly what it was. So we maintain a perfect environment, the same that they do in space. Wow. Yeah. wow. So that's what, um, these are mission oxygen here. So this is how much oxygen uh, we use for our normal missions. We always bring 150% of what we need. So, um, you know, a, a typical mission uh, might be eight hours. One of these normally lasts about seven. So, you know, I have the two, wow, yeah. two for a normal. Um, if we're doing an extra long mission, we can actually bring extra bottles too. But then the other thing we have is emergency oxygen, and that's what this is. And this is all exterior of the submarine. There's five really big tanks. That allows us to stay down for five days if wow. we really needed five to. Five days here, oh my god. Yeah. A bit claustrophobic to be five days. You have to be yeah, really, yeah, really yeah. trained to do that. <laughs> yeah, the only time that would happen is something has gone horribly wrong. Uh, we never plan to do that, but um, you know, it's there just in case. So we have all these extra safety systems and things just in case. So Five or six plan sessions are right. Yeah. <laughs> So um, well, then we have ca cabin lights here, and normally our cabin lights when we're at the surface are white, and then when we're down deep underwater, we red. turn them to red. Yep. Um, we can do any color if we really want to. <laughs> Body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's kind of fun, um, like when we're showing the submarine, we'll turn it blue in here at nighttime, and it makes it feel cool. But um, yeah. Uh, then let's see. This is our. Um, VHF radio for talking on the surface and this is our underwater communication system so this uses radio waves this uses um, acoustic mm -hmm. so and then we have the external temperature and that's what the temperature outside the submarine is but um, if for any reason we have a temperature spike it shows up here and it, there's a big loud alarm we know it um, and uh, it lets us know what's happening so um, let's see here. So we talked about those. This is the routing for the VBs. And um, so how you make the forward and back tanks either pump in, pump out, or transfer. And then these are the emergency hydraulics. That's what we use. Um, those weights that we showed on the outside, if we want to drop those off, um, we use that. And uh, we also have the ability, like the manipulator, we can break off the arm if we need to. So, oh, whoa. <laughs> um, and then you'll see these, um, each one of you has one, and that's if, um, for, exactly. Yeah. So if we were to have smoke in the cockpit, it allows us to uh, put that on. They last for four hours. So um, the thing is, is all of the wire in here is special, and mm -hmm. it actually, if you take a lighter to it, does not put off smoke. Um, and then same thing with like the, the pads that they're also fire retardant and your plans for doing to tourist um, mm -hmm. if a tourist wants to go down 2000 meters and um, how much how, yeah. how expensive is yeah. that yeah so right. um, the dives vary as cheap as 1200 euros and all the way up to about 5000 euros so they're pretty expensive and um, but for what it is, it's not that expensive. Exactly, yeah. I mean, compared to if you want to do a trip to space for 14 yeah. minutes for a quarter million dollars, so. <laughs> so how, made, uh, how much time do you spend um, in the dive? If you pay, I don't know, 1,200 euros? Yeah, so that's normally like a three hour dive. It's, oh, it's, it's a little little less. We don't go, we'll go to the like the twilight zone where there's no light anymore, but we won't go to 2,000 meters. Um, 
if we tow out 2,000 meters, there's a lot more tow time. And um, for us, um, you know, it kind of depends on what the people want to see. If they want to just go really, really deep, okay, jumpsuit. And same thing, that's to um, just protect against any flammable materials. And what about the air conditioner? <laughs> so we actually don't need air conditioner because the ocean's it's super cold. cold. Yeah. So um, it's a steel hull. So it actually it, it does a few things naturally very very well. Um, one is it keeps it nice and cool in here. It never gets hot. Um, the only time it's hot is if we start on the surface and it's hot out. Yeah. Close the hatch the second you go underwater, it cools off. It's like going with a, with a dry suit diving somewhere. Exactly. Like, like, please exactly. go go fast yeah. down because I'm. The yeah. other thing that happens is when we breathe, we're expelling humidity and condensation. Well, exactly. So what's cool is that the sphere is really cold and the air is warm and moist. So condensation happens Yeah. and it dehumidifies the air naturally. So we don't need a dehumidifier. Um, it, we get little water droplets on the wall and then it falls down the wall. That's why these are here because it keeps you dry in case you're leaned mm. up against it. And um, then we use these wool blankets because they're fire retardant. And um, it's nice because if you get a little chilled, you can kind of put it around you. But most of the time, they make you kind of bunch them up and use them as pillows. So um, in whatever way is most comfortable. So and it's cold for you. So it's got um, toilet issues. How yeah, do you do that? We, we have that right here. So. Um, so for oh yeah yeah for it's uh, like the pee bags in the exactly. dry suit. Exactly, <laughs> and then usually. And we have uh, adapters for females, so oh. um, that's for number one. And if you gotta take a crap, it's a lot less comfortable. Um, oh. <laughs> and we we actually do a few things to make sure that people, when we're on a dive, don't have to. But um, you're nervous but, or something like that, and maybe you can. Yeah, but on an eight-hour dive, you typically have to go pee, and you know, yeah, it's it's actually oh, and and these come off. So, you, and then this is a seat, so you have this whole oh, back cool. area to go as well. Because it's a stretch, it's like super sketchy, but it's comfortable too, yeah, like yeah. at the same time. I mean, it's, you can just... It's like a super stretch. I'm going to go with the Wu Pro because with the Canon, it's like I can't teach you anything, almost. You can see here. But it's like, brutal, yeah. dude. Yeah. Can you imagine? Here in these windows, where they see? At 2,000 meters, you know, more depth. And the screen. I wouldn't take it. It's something unique, dude. It's incredible. Yeah, we're, we're like trying to people coming first. We're going to the back. So... Qué puta pasada, loco! Increíble, tío. Increíble. Creo que nunca he tenido una experiencia rollo de, de dónde he estado como esto, ¿sabes? Brutal, tío. Increíble. Solo existen seis submarinos en el mundo, tanto militares como privados, que pueden pasar de 2.000 metros o más, ¿sabes? Y, y estaba en uno, ojalá algún día pueda meterme y bajar, porque dice que el momento del descenso, que todas las luces van apagadas y solo se ve la bioluminiscencia de los organismos, es algo increíble que una vez que te metes en un submarino, tu concepto incluso de vida cambia, la manera de ver la vida y esa curiosidad. O sea que, pff, Scott, eres un genio, muchísimas gracias por esta oportunidad y ha sido un día increíble, la verdad. Espero que no sea muy aburrido el vídeo, no sé si hacerlo modo documental o ponerlo por parte o cachito. Y nada, yo creo que es algo muy bonito y que quizás sea denso, pero interesante para los que lo ven y que aprendáis porque vaya, hemos estado dentro luego un buen rato ya sin cámara hablando y es una locura, tío. Scott pasó de organizar bodas, a hacer submarinos y a trabajar en, en la agencia de los pacielos. O sea, es, parece una charla esta de TEDx y es eh, una pasión y un esfuerzo increíble, ¿sabes? Y que estén en Tenerife, que dicen que es el mejor sitio de todo el mundo, que habían mirado a todos lados y que este era el mejor, es como una maravilla, ¿sabes? Que estemos encima, pues eso, que lo tengamos en España. O sea, que es un lujo y aquí está el submarino, están ellos dentro ahora otra vez, me parece. Y un flipe, tío, un flipe. Pues después del submarino hemos comido con todo el equipo del Mini 6, hemos hablado de, del espacio de, de todo del submarino. De SpaceX, de SpaceX, de paranoia, de conspiraciones, de todo. Y ha sido la caña, o sea, ¿ha cundido saltarnos de las clases o no? Mi gente. Wow, no, pues ya ves, sí. Sabrina, lo siento. Sabrina, lo siento. Pero, mucho, pero, lo que es. pero un submarino es un submarino. Así que encima, de caso sin batería, cerramos ya el vídeo de hoy. Ha sido una puta pasada. Espero que se vea bien en los planos. Y nada, hasta la próxima.